Thank you, Seth and Donna. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ruqiyah Sheikh Mohammed. I'm a full stack developer from Minneapolis, currently working at Suna, a really cool startup that has locations in Denver and Austin. I'm a new mom, uh, and a little bit about me. I'm a new mom, fashion and art lover, and speaker and foodie. I've been in the tech industry, just a little caveat, by the way, I have a little cold, so please, I have a cold today, so please bear with me. I've been in the tech world for a little over three years now, and I came from a non-traditional background, the legal field. I made the switch, and it was the best decision I've made, and I haven't looked back since. So a little story about my non-traditional journey to tech. Um, I it started a little around four years ago, and I remember... I had a really good friend of mine tell me that, hey, before you go into the legal field and, and pursue um, going to law school and spending all that time and money, you might want to work in the field first. So I took her advice and I was a paralegal for a while. And throughout my time as a paralegal, I really had an inside look working with judges and attorneys. And I realized that the justice system wasn't completely always just and it wasn't an objective system and that really put me off so then i started going on a journey of you know what i really want to know i really want to find a different route because i that's not what i wanted to do so i went to kenya for a while i moved there and i remember i had an i really wanted to get my foot in the door at a non-governmental organization so um i um, in, I, I applied for a job at the United Nations, and one of the positions they called me for, interviewed me for, was a tech position internship. And I didn't really know what that like software engineering was completely. So what I did was I um, went on all of these online resources to try to learn coding in eight hours. Obviously, that didn't go very well. So, but I remember it lit a fire in me. Like, I was like, oh my God, this is so interesting. I really want to learn this and look into it. So, I came back to Minnesota and I was like, I don't want to go back to school for another two years or four years. I wanted to know if there was any other route to go into this industry. So, I did some research and I found out something called boot camps, technical boot camps. I found one in Minnesota, which was called Prime Digital Academy, and I applied and it was. Um, like I went through that process. I did an intense boot camp for five to six months. And then after that, um, I started in the tech industry. And over the years, I realized there was lots of triumphs, met awesome people, built really cool stuff. But there was lots of failure, imposter syndrome, broke some stuff. And overall, I learned a lot. But this is why I want to share some helpful tips I learned along the way. I'm a strong believer that it's not about working harder, but it's all about working smarter. What do I mean by that? In most problems, there's an easy way and a long, difficult way to get to a solution. For example, in school, your math teacher teaches you the long, difficult way to solve an algebra question before she shows you how to do it via a scientific calculator. Programming is similar to doing all the things via a scientific calculator. Working smarter ultimately gives you a priceless payoff, more time. In this talk, I'll be discussing five steps to getting unstuck, and I feel like I'm an expert at getting stuck, so let's just dive in. During my first year in tech, I worked on a team with all senior developers who've been in the industry for ages, and I was their first junior person on the team. It was really difficult for me because of the obvious imposter syndrome, in addition to the lack of um, experience and support from my team with the junior person. I was there first. There is a huge gap between me and the senior devs, but I learned one very valuable lesson along the way. I asked for feedback from one of the devs on my tech performance. And I remember one of the things he said to me stuck with me my entire career. He said, you do not ask the right questions. I was confused because I've been, I've been told since elementary school, there's no such thing as a dumb question, right? I asked him to elaborate. He said, Rukuya, when you're explaining the problem, you ask questions that are open-ended, not yes or no. And he went on explaining himself. And I know he didn't directly say dumb question, but that was his Minnesota nice way of saying it. I felt confused at first and more like an imposter. Not only was I questioning my questioning skills, my technical skills, but I was also questioning my questioning skills. I didn't even know that was a thing. Throughout my career, I used that conversation um, as a motivation to constantly iterate on getting unstuck on problems. Let's walk through a real life problem together and my five steps on getting unstuck to get to the right results. Let's see how we can solve this problem together. Side note, 
all most of the terms I'll be using will be defined in the glossary for you for reference. And I'll also be explaining it on the way. I'll paste the glossary in the chat when I'm done. So I'll be working on a problem using Ruby on Rails, which is a backend language for web application with Vue.js, which is an open source JavaScript framework. And the example I'll be going through is going to use RSpec, which is a test tool written in Ruby on Rails. And my test is using Capybara, not the animal, but a library that allows you, us to easily stimulate how a user interacts with our app. And the app is going to be a booking app, which um, a booking app with a login and create user page using device, which is a Rails gem used for authentication. So I know there was a lot of technical terms I just threw at you, but don't worry, you don't need to really know um, memorize all those or really take it in because I'll go through everything as we go through the five steps. So this is a real life problem I had. My ticket states that I need to add a system test which allows us to test user interaction when creating a user on our app. I'll start by adding the test password cannot be bank be blank. Our spec syntax is pretty user readable. So basically what it's saying is what it, it's how we're going to read it out it should not be successful because password cannot be blank. So what it's going to do, it's going to visit a user registration path. And then within there's going to be a form there. And then we're going to fill the name uh, input with the word test. We're going to fill the email input with test at example.com. And then we're going to click button, create account. What we expect to happen is password can be blank. Like that's what we expect the page to spit out to us. <laughs> So I go to my console and run my test and it fails. I didn't expect it to fail and I, I'm not sure why it did. Now let's go through step one of the five steps of getting unstuck. Step one, start by doing your own troubleshooting. Troubleshooting. Do you have any helpful error messages, console logs, or loud messaging that can direct you to the problem? This is an obvious step, but most people skip it. So make sure to pause and take some time to thoroughly read it. Here, there's a lot of red. It's not good. I want to see green because green means passing. Let's start off by reading the failure. It looks like it says, expect to have page cannot be blank, but it doesn't have that. I can see this because the error messaging in Capybara is telling me what it does see instead. In step one, we have helpful error messages which um, helps us understand our problem, but it's not enough. I'd like to point out any of the, at any point, if you get unstuck in the, before the fifth step or at any step, stop. Because for example, if you get unstuck on step one, there's no need to go through the rest of the five steps. Remember, this is all about working smarter, not harder. Okay, let's move on to step two. Start by Googling. Google specific queries. Make sure your questions is specific for your example. It's not broad, that, and it's not broad. This is an example of doing Googling wrong. If you were stuck on a migration problem, like just copying and pasting the whole error message on there, most of the time, it might not get you to the right answer. So for, let me give you an example. If you were stuck on a Rails migration problem, which is like a database problem, instead of um, instead of googling how to why am I get instead of googling why am I getting a migration problem, you it bet, it's best to be more specific and say how to correctly roll back migration columns in Rails. Let's try step two. In our example, password can't be blank. Okay, so let's see, what would a good example be? It was, it's good to include the framework you're using, the language, and the tool. So in our scenario, it looks like um, we are using, um, sorry, I will try, so this is a more specific query. It, how to test create new user from an RSpec Capybara. I search what I want to accomplish and I include my language, my framework, and my tools. I have a checklist I usually go through, which are, did I include the specific language? Did I include a, a framework? Did I list any tools? Um, two to three words, what you're trying to accomplish and the obvious, put it in a question form. During step two, most of the platforms I, I turn to is Stack Overflow sometimes, Dev2, Medium, YouTube, and ThoughtBot. ThoughtBot is result three. The good thing about this is because 
ThoughtBot created FactoryBot, which we're using as our fixture replacement, which allows us to produce our test data. I clicked through a couple of the results and didn't get unstuck. So I guess we have to move on to step number three. Look at other pieces of a puzzle. Take a zoom in and zoom out approach of the parts of the code to see if you missed anything. What do I mean by this? Let's use our example. If we zoom out, if we zoom out, we notice that password cannot be blank. So what does that really mean? That the password, the password is actually supposed to be required. It is able to be blank. So that's not correct. Next, if we zoom out, we need to look at other files that this code is aff affecting. Rails is a model view controller language. So we should look at these three things, the model, the view, and the controller. In our Vue.js code, everything we are using in our password input field seems to be correct. We are using something called the validate library to validate our password field. And that all seems to be correct. So we're looking at the view the front end part of it and that seems to look that seems all to be accurate so for the sake of time let's just say i looked over my user model and controller and i didn't notice anything and we're still stuck so let's just move on to step number four this is one of my um i actually really like this step it's to ask a coworker, a classmate or somebody don't try to do everything alone asking someone is a tool which benefits you and the person alike sometimes in step four you get unstuck simply by speaking out loud to another person and explaining your thought process in tech we call that rubber ducking when you use someone or an actual rubber duck to to talk through your thought process similar to talking to a rubber duck on your desk this step like in many others might seem very obvious, but it isn't always done efficiently. From my story in the beginning, you recall the senior dev saying, I don't ask the right questions. Part of step two is to ask open-ended style questions, not yes or no, closed-ended questions. What do I mean by that? Let's walk through an example. Let's say I ran into my coworker, Amal. An example of a closed-ended question to our problem would be, Hey, Amal, I'm getting an RSpec error when running my current user test. I'm not sure why. Do you know? This question does not provide any details. The answer is a yes and no, which won't allow further conversation. And thirdly, we haven't told Amal anything we tried. The right way to ask this question would be, Hey, Amal, I'm getting an RSpec error when running my create user test. I'm currently using devise as my login, RSpec as testing, and Capybara. The error in my test has a false failure. I'm expecting it to pass. I looked at my logs and it says X and my console and it says Y. I did some research and read about Z. I read a couple of things and also looked at other files touching my test and it's still failing. Cool if we walk through it together. This question is very detailed. It's open-ended and it engages dialogue and we told Amal what we already tried, so it ensures us not repeating any steps, which allows us to work smarter. What I love about this step is that you get to get unstuck simply by talking it through, and it works wonders when you unload your brain and you free it up for so much space to get solutions. After a fruitful discussion with Amal, we couldn't get unstuck. So let's move on to step number five. Step number five, step away. Clear your head, take a break, go on a walk, play with your baby, take a breather and step away from your computer. Majority of the time, excuse me. Majority of the time, you just need to give your brain a break after cranking through a technical problem for a while. If you're new in this industry, you're gonna realize soon that when you're, you're constantly on, working on a computer and like using that part of your brain your brain especially when you're new and your brain is reformatting to learn technology and all of that it's exhausting and sometimes all you really need for your brain to recharge is to step away okay so statistics show that about 90 percent of a North American employees that take breaks say it helps them feel refreshed and ready to get back to work. 
It might sound counterintuitive, especially in a hyper busy industry we are in, but science research from the Science Daily shows that increases productivity, uh, improves mental well-being, boosts creativity, and creates healthy habits for you and your team, and just in general. I feel super strongly about this because boosting creativity because software engineering requires a lot of creativity and taking a break helps recharge your creative juices and ultimately allows you to work smarter. I know we live in a time where now we're learning more than ever, especially being at home all the time and you know all the stress of 2020 that it's really important just to step back sometimes and just take a break. It actually helps you code and develop better. Okay, so today together, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a speed break. In reality, your break should, should, be, should not be this short. Take a moment and just breathe with me. Close your eyes, actually do it, and take a deep breath for four seconds. Hold it for four seconds. And exhale for four seconds. Let's do it one more time. Breathe in for four seconds. Hold it for four seconds. One, two, three, four. And exhale for four seconds. How does that feel? Relaxing, I hope. At times, this is all of our, our body and brain needs to get unstuck and recharge and start again with a fresh perspective. I hope that felt great because I honestly, is it's always good. I love breathing. Now that we took a break and returned to our problem, I remembered something in step three, the zooming out approach that I missed. We made sure that the Vue.js front end was validated in the password, but what about the back end? Let's look at our user model again. So it looks like we have an issue in our user model. We are validating the email, the name, but not the password. We can add our own validation, but since we're using device already, our password, our, our, our authentication, um, they have a well-encompassing validation module that we can call named validatable. Um, what does validatable include? It has like, it, it validates for password presence, confirmation, length, and all of this other great stuff. If we add that to our user model and rerun our test, it passes. Step five is what we needed to get unstuck. Yay, good job, everyone. In summary, the five steps are start by doing your own troubleshooting, Google very specific queries, look at other pieces of the puzzle, zoom in sometimes and zoom out or do both, ask a coworker, classmate, step someone, and finally step away. And remember, if you get unstuck at any point, you can stop at that step. And it's all about working. It's not about working harder, but it's all about working smarter. Throughout my career, I use these steps to never feel the way I felt that day that I had the conversation with this senior developer. I learned to change that stuck moment to a learning and empowering moment. I learned that these steps throughout my tech journey saved me lots of time and helped me get unstuck and I hope it does the same for you. Now that I have the tool, not only did I become a stronger developer, but I became a more confident developer. And I hope if you follow these steps, you can too. I hope you enjoyed and learned some really helpful tips and feel free to look me up in any of these socials and good luck on your journey of working smarter and getting unstuck. That was so good. I know. Thank you, Rokia. Seth and I are like writing notes. Like I was sitting there in front of them because yeah. we have a we have a confidence monitor over there have, at the yeah. screen. Now she was like, "Okay, do your breath thing," and I was We're like, like oh. "We did the breath thing. We didn't pass out, so that was the miracle." We breathed. And new we term. Right. Rubber ducking. Rubber ducking. That was new. That was mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, we didn't know what that was, so we learned things. Thank you, Rokia. That was great. I gotta stop clicking this pen. It's like stop it. Nuts. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. Stop it. <laughs>